Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this fifth day of October, Saturday, and we are in another weekend, actually the first weekend of the month, and today's topic is titled, The Preacher and the Goat, and Proverbs 15, 13, or actually 15, 15, B is the passage, and we'll look at that in perhaps the entirety of Proverbs 15, and uh, the, today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Time, Day Heights, Ohio. So he'll be the author for today. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. But first, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus. And then he'll come and uh, save your soul. And then the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you and separates your soul from your flesh and that's a circumcision made without hands and done by God himself so um, that's uh, not sure how that's done but uh, got to trust God that he does that and then the Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you and and rule in your heart in your life as you allow him to and not to give into the flesh after you're saved and and of course uh, <clears throat> that doesn't <clears throat> keep you saved or anything like that when you do good works but it shows how much you love the Lord and how much you want to be obedient to him and keep your rewards and all that and not to give in the temptation and the flesh all the time and to have the victory through jesus christ our lord and amen so all right so let's go ahead and get into the scripture song first for today for the fifth day of the month and philippians 2 5 through 8 is the scripture song let's just go ahead and look at philippians chapter 2 in its entirety and and let's go ahead here and philippians is a good book here. <clears throat> you can never be, read it too much. You can never read the Bible too much. So, amen. As a matter of fact, it's good to read it. The more you read it, the more you get it sunk into your heart and your soul. So, Philippians 2. And let's see, there's 30 verses here. So, let's go ahead and read this in its entirety from verse 1. And it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit... If any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Amen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. <clears throat> Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and that means that we're not to keep our salvation and what we uh, have believed inside. We're supposed to get it out and tell it to others. That's what that means. So not to keep it to yourself, but to go tell others about uh, what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross and how he saved your soul when you called upon him to save you. Amen. So that's what that's talking about. And then verse 13 continues on. It says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be 
of good comfort when I know your state, for I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the Father he hath served with me in the gospel, him therefore I hope to send uh, presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me, but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly, yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness, because that ye had heard that he had been sick, for indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when ye see him again ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because of the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, and not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. And that's Paul speaking there in Philippians chapter 2. So, amen. And you can read the rest of ch uh, chapter 3 and 4 there of Philippians. And now let's go ahead and get into the scripture song for today from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. And sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty on the CD. <clears throat> so here we go. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let, Let this mind be in you, which, which was, was also in Christ Jesus, Jesus who, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made, made himself of no reputation, took upon him form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And this mind let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's right, amen. Okay, so let's put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again at the end of the broadcast. I'm trying to turn this up a little bit, but it's not seeming, doesn't seem to be wanting to turn up there. There we go. It seemed like it was just not turned up enough so all right so we'll put that aside and we'll do those scripture songs again at the end of the broadcast and now it's time to get into today's baptist bread topic for saturday october 5th 2024 titled the preacher and the goat <clears throat> and it says here in proverbs fifteen fifteen b he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast so that's the passage there proverbs fifteen fifteen b and um, you can read the rest of uh, Proverbs 15 in its entirety. You just want to check the rest of uh, verse 15 really quick. So, 
So let's go to Proverbs 15 really quick here. All right, so Proverbs 15 and first two. Let's see here. All right, so the first part of 15 says, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. And it says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs with or where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. And so, and then the rest of the chapter there doesn't really talk much more about the topic uh, there in the rest of the chapter, but good uh, Proverbs there, Proverbs chapter 15. And today's author, of course, is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Time, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of the preacher <clears throat> and the goat. And he writes here, says here, Some may not agree, but the wise man wrote, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Proverbs 17.22a One of our mama goats, a doe, had twins, and they followed me around like my shadow. He says, uh, Brother Green says, at least I have a following. <laughs> uh, one morning I walked them out to the yard beside the barn and thought they'd stay there. The little boy, a buck, did, but his twin sister beat me back to the gate. <laughs> little goats have four legs, but poor old me has only two. After three tries, I finally won the race back and closed the gate. The twins' mother decided she was not going to feed her kids, so my wife and I had to convince her. We had to catch her, and while trying to hold her, oh, what fun, he writes in parentheses, my wife held the kids in place to let them feed. One day, when I tried to catch her, all I caught was a, hand, was a handful of fur. Not wanting to lose my ten, tenuous grip, I got both arms around her and tackled her. I'm sure that was pretty entertaining. Uh, wrestling and football have nothing on me, he writes. After my wife stopped laughing, my dear precious mate came to help me. You might ask why I raise goats. They are great preaching illustrations, and we need some humor. And so do you, said King Solomon. <laughs> right? So that's uh, R.K. That's actually the author for today. And uh, Tim Green is the one that puts this P.S. in here. So R.K., let's see who R.K., the initials for R.K. Um, so he's actually the author today, who this R.K. is. Uh, where are you, R.K.? So that would be Randy Cruz, so he was actually the author today. So this was his story, not Brother Tim Green's story. Brother Tim Green has the P.S. down at the bottom here in parentheses. So um, let's see. So uh, let's see, where was he at? Um, R.K. was Randy Cruz, pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Stanwood, I.A. So he's the um, one that told this story here. So this was his story. And then... Brother Tim Green has this P.S. here. He says, kind of reminds me of dealing with carnal church members. That's why I'm an evangelist. Oh, yikes. So, and that was uh, Brother Tim Green's little P.S. there. And uh, so let's uh, take heed to this message here. <clears throat> and uh, get a little topic there about the preacher and the goat. And then Brother Green's little P.S. here. Where he said, kind of reminds me of dealing with carnal church members. That's why I'm an evangelist instead of a pastor. He says so. So, because um, being a pastor, you have to um, deal with a lot of church uh, members and, uh, and carnal church members and and church members' uh, problems and stuff. So, so it takes a lot to to be a pastor of a church, and it's not just getting up behind the pulpit and preaching the gospel and preaching messages to the congregation, but it's actually helping uh, members of the congregation when they're going through uh, troubles and trials and all that stuff. So so if you don't want to be a pastor, then then um, you just want to be a preacher of God's word and go out there and be an evangelist or whatever and get on the street and preach the gospel, well then do that. But don't say you want to be a pastor because you don't really understand what a pastor 
what all the job is in title, titling. And uh, so, so you can ask any pastor about that. So if you don't want to be a pastor and you don't want to deal with um, other people's problems, well then <laughs> just go out there and preach the gospel and preach the word of God and that's it. And don't get involved in, in uh, all the other stuff. But it's important if you're going to be a pastor that it's not about yourself anymore. It's about others. And of course that goes for all of us that we're all to be caring about others and other um, brothers and sisters in Christ and to love one another. And it's not supposed to be about yourself anymore. So it's about be, being about others and caring for others and helping others uh, in the church house of other believers in Christ. So, amen. All right, so that's the topic there from the Baptist spread. And now we're going to conclude this week on teaching. And this is day 245, Saturday. And it's titled, Live What You Teach. So we are to live what we teach. That's sound doctrine. So our, our walk should match our talk. And Romans 2.21 is the passage. And we'll read that here. And then we'll look at the entirety of chapter 2 of Romans. And it says, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, does thou st steal? Hmm. So that's the passage there. So let's look at the entirety of uh, chapter um, 2 here. And let's look at that. So chapter 2 of Romans. Alright, so chapter 2. And let's look here. Chapter 2, and there's 29 verses here. So let's go ahead and uh, read this here. Alright, so chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness or of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who be patient, continuance, uh, yeah, to them who by patient, continuance, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor, and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, up upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, uh, which shew the work of the law, which, or excuse me, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, that their conscience, conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge, and of the truth in the law, thou therefore which teaches another, teachest thou not thyself? 
Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision thus transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And that's the entirety of chapter 2 there. So now let's go ahead and get into the topic here for today. And this again is titled, Live What You Teach, Day 245, Saturday. Romans 2.21 again says, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? And so this is from the book Daily Strength, Volume 2 by Brother Stoffer and Brother Ray. And the introductory thoughts say this. It says, It is easy to tell others what to do and how to do it, but very unwise to fail to follow one's own instructions and teachings. Right? So... In fact, a man naturally seems to want to place greater burdens upon others than he himself is willing to bear. This was one of the primary issues addressed by those attending the Council of Acts chapter 15 in Jerusalem. Peter concluded with the other apostles uh, in agreement that it was not right to ask others to bear a yoke that previous generations were unable to bear. Acts 15.10 uh, this does not mean that believers change their teaching to fit their obedience. Rather, believers ought to obey the truth and teach these truths to others. How many preachers and teachers have spoken about subject matters only to refuse to obey the very truths they have taught to others? <laughs> Good question. So let's make sure that when we're teaching others that we're um, teaching ourselves and obeying the truth as we teach it to others and not tell others to um, to obey certain things when we're not going to obey them ourselves. So don't be preaching and teaching on things that we're not going to obey ourselves. So that's a good lesson to be learned today from the introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. And of course, you can apply this to adults also. It says, Paul told Timothy not only to teach, but to be a good example. First Timothy 4, 11 through 12. When we do wrong, we may cause others to not to believe in God, or to think that they don't have to do what he says, right? Uh, King David's sin gave God's enemies great occasion to speak against the Lord, Second Samuel twelve fourteen. So let's take heed to that and be a good example and a good testimony. And now for everyone, devotional thoughts for everyone, it says, What truths have you taught to others only to disregard them yourself? yourself how does this harm those to whom you initially taught the truth hmm. harms them a lot because they look at you and they're like well you're not doing it you tell me to do it <laughs> right so um then continuing on it says how many people have been turned away from the truths you taught because of your own disobedience to the truth what will you do to mend what you have broken hmm. right so let's take heed of these questions here and Ask yourself these things, and if you're not doing right, then don't be trying to teach others uh, what to do if you're not doing it. So, amen. All right, now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you live what you teach, and then ask the Lord to make you an example for other believers. And then the song from the book today is titled, Soldiers of Christ and Truth Arrayed. So that's the hymn from the book, and then the quotes from the next volume. Volume 3, week 35, is Subject Relationships Continued. And we have two quotes here. 
It says God instituted marriage, and he alone has the right to establish the rightful candidates to join together in this union. And of course, believers are to be with other believers in marriage, and not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers in marriage, because you know that um, whether you're a man or a woman, and you marry an unbeliever, that they're going to tend to take you away from the truth. And of course, if both of you were unsaved at the time you met, and then when if you get saved, well then, then you, of course you're still married, and you're not to divorce your wife or your husband. And once you get saved, you try to get them one the Christ, and so then to stay married. But um, if you're going to marry an unbeliever and you're already saved, and you're going to try to find an unbeliever to marry, well that's not right because God says that um, believers are supposed to marry other believers. So if um, if you think that that is uh, not right what God says, well, then you're you're in the wrong. And if you don't line up with God, you're wrong, and God's always right. Amen? So, and I have had many people tell me, oh, well, I'm going to uh, marry an unbeliever, and I'm going to try to get him saved. That's not right. That's not how you do it. You're supposed to find a, another believer, and um, hopefully one that is fully living for the Lord, and uh, so they can help you and vice versa. So, and try not to marry a carnal Christian, um, but but of course again we're to, to try to find another believer to marry and not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers even in marriage. So, amen. All right, and then next uh, quote it says God instituted marriage so that man would not have to be alone, but man should enter into marriage for the purpose of glorifying God. Right. So, and God should always be in the. Uh, midst of the marriage, he's always to be the first person or the third person. Uh, or actually, he should be the first person in the marriage. So three of you, and not somebody else. He should always be the uh, the the one that you always put first, and then you and your wife and your husband, or Amen, who, uh, whoever's listening out there. So and if you choose to stay single, well then stay single and serve the Lord, uh, being single. But if you want to get married, well then find a believer to marry. So Amen. All right, so that's uh, the quotes from the next volume on Relationships Continued. And tomorrow we'll be getting into the week 36, which will be the first week of reading and studying. And this will be two weeks. Week 36 and 37 will be on reading and studying. And this goes along with teaching. So, of course, you got to read and study your Bible and all that stuff. So if you want to be a good teacher of God's Word, you have to read and study in the Bible. And we'll get into that tomorrow, the introductory stuff tomorrow, reading and studying and how it's found, the variations of the word, and the first usage, and then the last usage, and then how it's defined, and then interesting fact about uh, these words, and then Bible study tip, and then we'll go into the week, and then tomorrow is uh, day 246, church day, and we'll be going through Deuteronomy 17, verses 14 through 19, and we'll look at that, and we'll try to look at the entire chapter uh, there in Deuteronomy 17 to get the context of the chapter there. So that's that information there for tomorrow. And now let's put that aside and put the Baptist bread up here and grab the hymn book now. So we'll do this first hymn. All right, so this first hymn here, grab the hymn book. And this first hymn is uh, titled... Uh, day of all the week the best but it's actually under a different title uh, that I found here it's uh, actually the first um, it's titled here uh, safety through another week so that's the actual title that I found on the instrumental and this is another one by John Newton and you know his uh, hymn amazing grace that's one of his famous hymns there but this is another one written by him and this is going to be the first on these hymns on the Lord's Day Talking about the Lord's Day here, a spiritual song, and this is hymn 885 in the book, titled Day of All the Week the Best, or um, the other title is Safety Through Another Week, as the other title here, which is um, part of the first stanza, and written by John Newton, 1725 to 1807, and then Lowell Mason, 1792 to 1872. So let's go ahead and we'll press play and sing along with the instrumental. Make sure this is turned up here. All right. So let's do this.
safely through another week that has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek on the appointed worship day. Day of all, the week the best, and the month eternal rest. Day of all, the week the best, and the month eternal rest. While mercy is multiplied each hour, through the, the week our praise demand, guarded by almighty power, fed and guided by his hand. Though ungrateful we have been, only made returns of sin. Though ungrateful we have been, only made returns of sin. While we pray for pardoning grace, through the dear Redeemer's name, Show thy reconciled face, shine away our sin and shame. From our worldly care set free, may we rest this night with thee. From our worldly care set free, may we rest this night with thee. When the morn shall bid us rise, May we feel thy presence near, may thy glory meet our eyes, when we in thy house appear. There affords us, Lord, a taste of our everlasting feast. There affords us, Lord, a taste of our everlasting feast. Go back here a little ways. May the gospel's joyful sound conquer sinners, comfort saints. May the fruits of grace abound, bring relief for all complaints. Thus may all our worship prove, till we join the church above. Thus may all our worship prove, Till we join the church above. Amen. So I had to do that because they didn't have the fifth stanza there in the instrumental. So, amen. Good hymn there. And now let me give you the references. No story for this one. So stanza one, we have Romans 15, 24, 1 Corinthians 16, 2, Hebrews 4, 9, and Revelation 5, 9 through 10. Stanza two is... Uh, Lamentations three, twenty-two through twenty-three, Psalm seventy-eight twenty or seventy-two, Psalm seventy-eight seventy-two, um, Judges three seven, and that's it for stanza two. Stanza three is Hebrews four sixteen, Second Corinthians four six, and First Peter five seven, and then Philippians four six through seven. Stanza four is Psalm three five, First Timothy three fifteen. In uh, Mark fourteen twenty five, and then stanza five is Second Timothy four two, Second Corinthians twelve nine, and Hebrews twelve twenty three. So that's the end of the first hymn there. And now let's go ahead and jump back a little ways to the second hymn, and this is titled "Soldiers of Christ and Truth Arrayed." So let me go back here and look this one here. All right, so. Soldiers of Christ and Truth Arrayed. Okay, so let me turn this down here for a minute in case there's ads. Oops. All right. So let me turn that back up. All right. So turn that back to the beginning. And 
this is the second hymn from the book, and this is titled uh, Soldiers of Christ and Truth Arrayed, and this is one of these The Man of God hymns, a spiritual song, hymn 852 in the book, and this is written by Basil Manley Jr., 1825 to 1892, and then this is a German melody from the modern psalmist, 1840. No story for this one, so let's press play here and try to sing along with the instrumental. Soldiers of Christ in truth arrayed, a world in ruins needs your aid, a world by sin destroyed.